one, two, three, four, five. Yes, yeah, there's a man. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. I will take it again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, and a very warm welcome on this third Sunday after Trinity. It is also Father's Day, so we will take some moments to celebrate our fathers and our men and our boys, and also pray for God's blessing upon them. So we welcome everyone watching online, and if today is your first time of visiting us, you are also very, very warmly welcome. Our first hymn is hymn 281. All my hope on God is founded, hymn 281. Please be seated for a prayer, a prayer of penitence. Let us turn to God, acknowledging that we sometimes get things wrong. Your love gives us life. 
but we fail to live as your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good, but we seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help, but we ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as we sing the Gloria. Let us pray. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the Holy Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is our life and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we're at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to be pleasing to him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive due recompense for actions done in the body, whether good or evil. This is the word of the Lord. Let us now stand to sing our gradual hymn to welcome the gospel, hymn 396, for the fruit of his creation.
be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seeds on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces it of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you please sit down? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thy kingdom come, or if you're a modernist, you may prefer your kingdom come. Either way, those words which we say every day in the Lord's Prayer are fundamental to our Christian faith. We believe in the coming of God's kingdom. It matters to us. So what do those words mean? We're not thinking of a, a geographical area, a kingdom in the clouds, but rather of a state in which God's authority and power over nature and people is absolute. Jesus spoke about the kingdom and his hearers were keen to explore the subject. What is the kingdom about? What is it like? They wanted to dig deeper. And although the kingdom will always remain a mystery, so should we care about what it's like. In today's Gospel, Mark has given us two examples of Jesus' attempts to satisfy their search, in each case using the, the image of seed. We can imagine Mark recording one of the parables and then perhaps thinking to himself, there was another parable about seed and putting the two side by side, the seed corn and the mustard seed, to complement one another. Let's look first at the mustard seed. We're not speaking of the stuff which we grow on our kitchen windowsills, but of a real tree. The RHS website has all the details. Jesus used that example because that sort of mustard seed was very small indeed, and yet it had the inner power to grow into a tree big enough for birds to build their nests. Jesus was acknowledging that some very small beginnings can produce big results. And then we turn to the parable of the grain of corn, which is perhaps less dramatic but raises some interesting questions. The seed is sown. As we know, it's not a good idea to dig up our seedlings to see how they're getting on. 
So the farmer gets on with life. The farmer works. The farmer sleeps, hoping, indeed confident, that the seed will grow. The farmer knows not how, but the seed grows. After a long period of silence and apparent inaction, that hope and confidence is rewarded by the sight of the first green shoot, followed by the stalk, and finally by the seed head. The new seed ripens, and at this point, the reaper arrives and harvests the crop. So, how does this illustrate the nature of God's kingdom? Is it the nature of the seed itself, that small parcel encapsulating an amazing life force ready to spring into action? Or is it the process of secret growth which parallels the farmer's hope and confidence in future success? Or is it the prospect of the harvest which is the farmer's measure of success? These are all attributes of the kingdom, the life force in the seed, its secret growth, and the ultimate fulfilment of the purpose of the seed. So what does this mean for us today? What difference can it make to our lives? Those of you who've come here today to worship God and celebrate Father's Day, indeed, all of us, know the value of love in our lives, in our families, our friends, our communities. That love is a reflection of God's love for each of us. His love is the life force of his kingdom. And to me, that means that the kingdom is not just something to be looked forward to in the future, but exists now. Clearly, the kingdom is still incomplete. We have only to look at the world around us to see that we have a long way to go. But this is where we come in, because we can all play our part in creating a better, fairer, more peaceful world. Love can be expressed in many ways. Helping people, caring for them, praying for them if we can't give practical help, but essentially doing something and not just thinking or talking about it. In this way, we can share in the life force, which is God's love for us. Similarly, we can share in that secret growth of the kingdom if we maintain our faith in God's power and authority. Last week, Reverend Eucaria spoke of the importance of hope in our way of life. This is especially important just now when so many people are in despair about so many kinds of things. And sometimes we find it hard not to join them. As St Paul said in today's first reading, we are always confident. Sometimes it's difficult to keep hope alive, but we must make an effort to help anyone who is walking on the edge. After all, Christianity is a religion of hope, and the world needs a lot of it today. And then finally, we think of the new seed being harvested. In terms of the kingdom, this represents God's final judgment, an awesome prospect. But we hope and trust that God will be merciful. As St Paul wrote, we make it our aim to be pleasing to the Lord, for all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive due recompense for actions done. We may see those words as a threat or a promise, but we must always try to please God in our thoughts and words and actions. It matters how we relate to one another and to God. If we can share in the life of the kingdom as it is now, we may hope to share in its final fulfilment. And so we pray, Father, may your kingdom come and your will be done. Amen.
Let us stand and together declare our faith in our God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with the power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. In these prayers, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, on this Father's Day, may we give thanks for those who love us, especially today, those who have or are performing a father's role in our lives. Thank you for those fathers who have striven to balance the demands of work, marriage and children with an honest awareness of both joy and sacrifice. Thank you for those fathers who, lacking a good model for a father, have worked to become a worthy and virtuous father. Thank you for those fathers who, by their own account, were not always there for their children, but who continue to offer those children, now grown, their love and support. Thank you for those fathers who, despite marital discord, have remained in their children's lives. Thank you for those fathers whose children are adopted and whose love and support has nurtured a thriving life. Thank you for those fathers who, as stepfathers, freely choose the obligation of fatherhood and earn their stepchildren's love and respect. Thank you for those fathers who have lost a child to death and continue to hold the child in their heart. Thank you for those who have no children but cherish to the next generation as if they were their own. Thank you for those men who have fathered us in their role as mentors and guides. And thank you for those men who are about to become fathers. May they openly delight in their children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we know that fatherhood can be a difficult journey with pain as well as joy. Let us pray for those, both children and fathers, who have been wounded by the words and actions of each other. We pray that wounds may be healed and new bonds created. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray to God in heaven for the growth of the kingdom. Dear Lord, may the kingdom, kingdom of God grow here in Sidcup around this country and around our world, in cities and in rural communities. May it grow in every human shelter and home, every place of work and education, in every conversation and every act of mutual care for one another. Let us identif identify our role in this endeavor and be part of your earthly army spreading the good news. Lord, in your mercy. May the kingdom grow to bring peace and healing where there is pain and sadness. We pray in particular for those who are living in Gaza, Ukraine, or other war-torn regions, and all those living under the shadow of personal or institutional abuse. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we pray for all those who are unwell 
and facing pain or weakness at this time. In particular, we pray for all those on our prayer list, including Michael Price, Toshan Marshall, and Paul Perrin and family, who have been recently added to our list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You, Lord, are the giver of life eternal. We pray for those who have died to this earthly life, that the Good Shepherd, who understands what it is to die, may bring them safely home. We pray in particular for those fathers who have died but live on in our memory and whose love continues to nurture us. And for Randolph Lynch, Imogen Hone, Doreen Russell, and Tony Cheriton, recently departed. And Charles Webb, Barry Haynes, Justin Larivia, and John Hall, whose anniversary of death falls at this time. We ask your blessing upon loved ones and friends who are at rest with you. May they rejoice in the fellowship of the saints and the fullness of life eternal. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for peace. Jesus says to his disciples, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your hearts not be troubled or be afraid. May the peace of the Lord always be with you. And I also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Peace. Is. Let us sing our offertory hymn, hymn 25, The King of Love, hymn 25.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son. Born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and one for you, a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and singing. You are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. Lord, as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we give you thanks for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Lord, send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one your kingdom all who share in this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of St. John the Evangelist and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, <coughs> who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the, king, the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. A word before we share the communion. All are welcome to the Lord's table. Please do come forward for either to take the bread and wine or for blessings. 
and the prayers for healing and wholeness are also uh, offered at the Lady Chapel. Please go forward to the Lady Chapel if you like to be prayed for. And we also have uh, gluten-free bread if you um, would like to have that. And uh, please do come and let us together share in this body and bread of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot comprehend, show us your glory as far as we can grasp it and shield us from knowing more than we can bear until we may look upon you without fear through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Um, before the notices, I will invite the joyful voices to come forward and sing our Father, the, our Father, so that during this time we will distribute chocolates to everyone just to celebrate our heroes, all the men in the church. So please, you're, feel free to stand and sing with us or feel free to sit and enjoy the music however you want it.
And now please make yourself comfortable for the notices. Ah, oh, thank you, Joyful Voices. That was quite splendid. Thank you. And for the chocolate, I got one. Um, first of all, we'd like to say thank you to Herman for the recital on Friday. If you weren't here, you missed a treat. Um, and it, it, it was a really good, good evening. Um, this week, um, we've had a request from Lark in the Park. Um, they are going to be having their event from the 25th to the 29th of July. If anybody would like to get involved in Lark in the Park, um, you can apply online. Um, I suppose you go to the Lark in the Park website and you can volunteer or join in. I know Joyful Voices sang there last year. You singing there again this year? Oh, Joyful Voices are singing there again this year. So we're involved already at St. John's, but if you want to get more involved, then do get in touch with them. Um, Next, uh, Wednesday the 20th, is it Wednesday? Wednesday the 20th? Yeah. Thursday, Thursday, I'm sorry, Thursday the 20th. We have the hustings here. Doors open at 7, um, the hustings start at 7.30. If you have any, any questions you want to give, we would like them in advance. Chris will take your questions. Chris, as I said last week, is, is, is chairing it. Good luck to him. Um, I think he's going to need it. Um, 29th of June, we have the Sig Cup Symphony Orchestra um, here at 7.30. Um, this is sort of their, their usual venue now. Um, if you'd like tickets for that, um, you can go on to the uh, Sig Cup Symphony Orchestra website and you can buy tickets on there. Um, and that is just to remind you of all the usual events we have this week. Everything's back to normal. Um, Ukraine English lesson, lessons, singing for the brain on Tuesday, uh, places of welcome on Wednesday. I hope everybody feels welcome to come along. Um, Thursday morning prayers, 9.30 to 10 at All Saints, and anybody's welcome to join them down there. And busy bees, as usual, on Friday morning. So that's your week coming. And are there any birthdays this week? No answer was the reply. Oh, there's some hands up. What's your name? Sorry? Joyce, when, when's your birthday? Oh, right, happy birthday to Joyce then, please. <laughs> All right, so let us now stand to sing our final hymn, hymn number eight, a very special hymn for all the, in celebration for Father's Day, so it's hymn number eight, Great is Thy Faithfulness, hymn eight.
let us now bow down for our final blessing. And as part of our final blessing, we will sing, Lord bless you to wise. And Joyful Voices is going to lead us. So please join us as we bless one another, especially for today. The Lord God Almighty is our Father. He loves us and tenderly cares for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. He has redeemed us and will defend us to the end. The Lord, the Holy Spirit is among us. He will lead us in God's holy way. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with everyone you love, living and the departed, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.